I'm going to reveal my $10,220 SGD a year dividends portfolio at the age of 26 years old. 10k a year isn't that much, it's only $850 a month. So my goal to retire with 2k a month is still actually pretty far. So in this video, I'll show you guys my current portfolio as of March 2024, including my retirement accounts as well as how far I am to reach my goal. Hi, if you're new to my channel, I make videos on my journey to financial independence and I have a goal of retiring with $2,000 from my passive income streams. If you're interested, consider subscribing. I have been investing since I was 18 years old using my parents' allowance, army allowance, part-time and internship pay, as well as Ang Pao money. So I've got a healthy head start even before I started working at 24 years old. I have no idea how much I had before I started working, but if I recall correctly, it was around 30 to 40k. I remember I had bought DBS shares when they were $15. Look at it now, it's almost $34.60 per share. So for those shares that I bought at $15, it's current dividend yield at $0.54 cents per unit, 4 times a year, which gives me a yield of 14.4%. I should have bought more DBS shares last time. Now I have 700 DBS shares at an average price of $30.16. So that's still a dividend yield of 7.16%. Not bad, but I have an even higher yielding Singapore stock which I will tell you later. However, I've also lost money from selling my Chinese stocks. I had Alibaba, Hang Seng Tech ETF and a Hong Kong tracker fund. All three of them lost money and I realized that loss of $22.7,000. I sold all of them because if I don't think these Chinese stocks can grow by more than 10% next year, then I might as well just liquidate them and buy S&P 500. Because if these Chinese stocks grow at 9% next year, then it is still more worth it to put them in S&P 500, which historically grows at 10%. So since my last portfolio video 5 months ago, in November 2023, selling the Chinese stocks was the main difference. I transferred them over to 10 SPDR ETF units and that has already made me 246 USD. So in just 5 short months, I already made 4.8% from SPDR ETF. Plus, I also get 91 Singapore dollars of dividends a year based on last year's dividend numbers. So that's $7.60 a month. Also, with the money realized from the Chinese stocks, I bought 37 shares of VGT at 506 USD. Now it's at 524 USD. So I already made 3.6% from VGT in just 2 months. If I had left them in Alibaba, it would have continued to lose money. So now I have 77 shares of VGT which has an unrealized profit of 7.3k USD. VGT also gives me dividends, so based on last year's dividends per unit, I'll get 330 SGD a year or 27 SGD a month from VGT. I have 20 units of VOG which I bought at $250, now it's at $340. So that's 1.8k USD of unrealized profit. VUG has dividends too. Based on last year's dividends per share, I get $33 SGD per year or only $2.05 per month. I'll get $37.35 Singapore dollars per month as dividends from my US portfolio. Not much, but that's not the main reason for investing in US ETF. I plan to invest more in these US stocks in the near future. Now moving on to my Singapore portfolio. The majority of my Singapore portfolio is in OCBC and I still plan on putting more money in it. Currently, I have 2,500 shares of OCBC and it's 14.8% of my entire portfolio. So based on 84 cents of dividends per share this year, I'll get 2.1k dividends for the year or $175 per month. At the average cost price I bought them at is at 7.38% of dividend yield. Even at the current price now of $13, it's still above 6% dividend yield. Another one of my favorite stocks that gives me $184 a month is Fraser's Logistics and Commercial Trust. It is 14.74% of my portfolio and I have 31.5,000 shares of this stock. I don't plan on buying any more of Fraser's Logistics and other REITs as the stock price more or less just goes sideways. Another REIT that gives me $125 of dividends per month is Maple Tree Pan Asia Commercial Trust or Maple Tree PAC. I have 16.5 thousand shares and it's 9.73% of my portfolio. So that's a dividend yield of 6.09%. Not too bad but it has been cutting its dividend payout so I'm thinking of liquidating this and buying more OCBC or US stocks with it. I'll also get $124 of dividends per month from Maple Tree Industrial Trust. I have 11,086 units of it and it's 11.82% of my portfolio. That's a dividend yield of 6.03 so it's performing roughly the same as Maple Tree PAC. Apple DC REIT gives me $42 a month as dividends. It's only a very small 3.78% on my portfolio as I only have 5,000 units of it and it has 1.4k of unrealized loss. So nope, I'm not going to buy any more Apple DC REIT. 
As for the aforementioned Singapore stocks, I'll get $784 SGD a month as dividends. So those are the main stocks in my little portfolio as a 26-year-old. The other stocks make up 1% or less of my portfolio. For example, Capital Land Commercial Trust is 0.87%, SIA Engineering at 0.2%, and STI is at 1.43%. I'll let you guys know the total dividend yield from my investments, but first I'll share what my investment strategy is. I think now I have enough Singapore stocks, so I plan to invest a little heavier in US stocks which I expect to return at least 10% or more a year. For the near future, I don't need that much dividend, so I will concentrate my next few salaries into the US stocks even though the bank's ex-dividend dates are coming up. The idea is when I need to fund a more costly lifestyle, for example when I have a kid or start to pay mortgage, I will liquidate only what I need from the growth stocks and put them in dividend stocks then I use the dividends to buy whatever I need and leave the rest of the US stocks there to grow at about 10% a year. So what is my dividend per month including the US stocks and my other smaller stocks? It's only 852 SGD a month, so that is $10,220 a year. However, this number is not that important to me because I have to consider the returns from my US stocks also. So I prefer looking at the market value of my investments which is now at 222k SGD. My dividend per month potential of the 222k market value at 6% dividend yield will bring me $1,110 per month. So this is the number that I will decide to retire with, not just the dividends from my dividend stocks. But I also have interest in my retirement accounts, 18.6k in the OA which gives me $467 at interest. I have 44k in SA which gives me $1793 as interest and the 24.6k in MA will give me $995 as interest. That's a total of $3,255 as interest, which is $271 per month from CPF. Besides CPF, I also have a little tiny bit in my SRS account, only $6,587. I'm planning to buy SPDR, which is an S&P 500 tracker. Based on historical returns, I should be realistically getting about 10% each year. But if I put this in 6% dividend stocks like my plan for my investment portfolio, I could get $33 a month. So from my investments, CPF and SRS, 1110 plus 271 plus 33 equals the $1,414 of returns per month. But actually, I'm only looking at the 1110 in order to retire since I can't touch the CPF and SRS money only after 60 plus years old. Since my goal is to retire at 2000 dividends a month, I'll need 400k invested in 6% dividend yield stocks. And that will take me another 2 years at the current rate I'm able to invest every month. So in another 2 years, I'll be 28 years old. I know 2k per month is not enough to retire in Singapore. So that's why even after I retire at 2k a month, I plan to keep my current lifestyle, spend only about $700 every month, and reinvest my dividends until I hit 3k a month by the time I'm married and buy BTO hopefully at around 6 to 8 years time. You can watch my video on my plan to retire with 2k a month and what kind of house and lifestyle I can get here.